Imagine the scenario. It's the late 80s. The world is grappling with the fall of the Iron Curtain, the introduction of the World Wide Web, and Home and Away has just aired on Australian television. And while this is happening, Shimano quietly introduces Hyperglide to the world. At first sight, to the untrained eye, there doesn't appear to be much difference between Hyperglide and what came before it. But if we take a closer look and zoom in, the differences, well, they become clear. Prior to a Hyperglide cassette, you had something called Uniglide, where the teeth weren't machined, but the teeth were slightly angled and just screwed on to a free her body. Prior to that, you just had teeth that were all the same on every single sprocket. The shaping of the teeth and the ramps isn't the only thing that's different. The way each of these individual sprockets fits onto the free her body is totally different too. So check this out. On prior to Hyperglide, what we had is sprockets that would be screwed on to a free her body, but this wouldn't work with Hyperglide because the position of every individual sprocket has to be perfect relative to the next sprocket. The teeth kind of all align, whereas they don't on these older cassettes. You can see, if we look at this Hyperglide cassette, the way in which this cog is positioned relative to the next one and the next one with all the ramps and stuff, it's a piece of precision engineering. Now to solve the issue, of people buying cassettes and then making sure that they align the sprockets perfectly, Shimano came up with an ingenious splined design to the free her body. Now, splines had first come into use on the Uniglide uh, cassettes, which featured splines and then a little threaded bit on the end of the spline free her body so that you could then lock the final sprocket in place. But Hyperglide did need this kind of precision positioning of every single sprocket and they achieved that with a really clever idea but a really simple one like many great ideas of just having the splines but then having one single wider spline positioned here and that guaranteed that the sprockets could only be put on in one orientation. Because the sprockets were no longer threaded onto the free hub body, it meant that you needed a new way to secure the cassette too. And that's why we got lock rings. So you can see on the end of this free hub body, there's a thread on the inside, which is where your lock ring goes. And that's what secures your cassette. Prior to Hyperglide, this wasn't needed. And these are design features, the wide spline and the lock ring. They're design features that exist today on the best and most up-to-date Shimano group sets. A really nerdy but cool detail is this free hub body is actually a really rare one because it's a halfway house between Uniglide and Hyperglide. The idea was that it was for people that were sort of transitioning between the two technologies. It was compatible with both. So you've got that single wider spline there so that the sprockets are positioned perfectly, but you've also got a bit of threading on the splines on the end so that it can take a traditional Uniglide uh, cassette on there as well, and you can just thread that last cassette ring onto the free hub body. When Hyperglide was first released, it didn't have anywhere as big a launch as Shimano SIS before it. And consequently, not everyone got the memo. There were actual sort of anecdotes from the time of disgruntled customers returning Hyperglide cassettes they bought from bike shops, complaining that they'd been sold a faulty one or a, a used one that was worn out because they didn't realize that <laughs> the uneven, sort of different shaped teeth weren't worn out. That was actually precision Japanese engineering because prior to Hyperglide, cassettes consisted of a set number of sprockets with different numbers of teeth on each, but all the teeth were the identical shape. And the result of this was that when you went to change gear, it took a lot longer for the chain to engage on the next sprocket. It was a lot clunkier and a lot less reliable. With Hyperglide, the individual sprockets on the cassette have become specially shaped with distinctive ramps and tooth profiles that allow the chain to effectively climb up and down the cassette. The chain 
can turn on the cassette while simultaneously being engaged on two different sprockets, allowing the cyclist to actually change gear under load. The result was smooth, crisp, reliable shifting. This here is a 1991 Kirk Precision of the TVM team. It's period correct. Oh, it's just a beauty, isn't it? I love like these old like retro bikes like this and the, the Kirk Precision with its magnesium girder-like frame. It's so distinctive. But I need to tell you some information about this bike to give you a bit of context for Hyperglide. When Hyperglide came out, it was at roughly the same sort of time as STI shifters were introduced. So it's pretty rare to have an example of a bike that makes use of the downtube SIS shifters and Hyperglide on the drivetrain. However, the, the TVM team used Kirk Precision frames sometimes, and they weren't designed for, to be used in conjunction with STI levers, so they had the old downtube shifters fitted on them. And ordinarily, they didn't ride yellow bikes either, but this was a special yellow one for the team to sort of parade on the Champs-Élysées at the end of the Tour de France. And you may remember that John Cannings did an excellent video on the Kirk Precision, looking at it in more detail. So if you want to find out more, then check that video out. But it's, a, it's actually a magnesium frame and it's injection molded, inspired by the design of a Ford Sierra uh, bumper, actually. Fact, um, my Frank Kirk. Every day is a school day. This bike is period correct, and you can see a, a very cool picture of Jesper Skibby sat on a bike just like this, looking, well, he's just an absolute legend, isn't he? He was a Shimano test rider uh, in that period, and you can see the bike equipped with Hyperglide. Hyperglide extends beyond just the cassette, though. It's also on the chain. So Hyperglide chains feature chamfered edges on the plates that help guide the chain more effectively over the teeth of the cassette, reducing friction and noise. Shimano chains are actually directional for this reason. And if you, if you, if you actually are lucky enough to have in a store cupboard somewhere, an original you know, uniglide chain, um, well, they're, they're quite rare. They're worth a fair bit these days. Not many of them around. People never kept them. They just used them. And like with many of Shimano's inventions and innovations over the years, where Shimano led the way, pretty much everyone else followed. And of all of Shimano's innovations, for me, Hyperglide is kind of the most underappreciated. It's, it's the most underrated. It's perhaps not as obvious and in your face as STI levers or DI2, but it, it completely changed bikes and shifting performance. I mean, if, if Hyperglide were one of the Beatles, it'd probably be George Harrison, most underrated Beatle. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, our look at this old tech. I love these old components. They're, oh, they're brilliant. And if you haven't seen our other videos in our Shimano Seismic Shift series, and make sure you check them out and subscribe so you don't miss the up and coming ones, which are STI and DI2. And uh, well, I'll see you soon. Bye.